Hello there, this is Cindy at cindybdesigns.com. Thank you for joining me today. We are making a super easy fun fold card made from the new Country Wood Suite collection in the 2024-2025 annual catalog that's available to you on May 1st. If you don't have one, hit me up and let me know. I will get one to you. Anyhow, this is a giant suite collection. There's fantastic line art in here, two stamp sets, two die cuts, two rolls of ribbon, embellishments. There's an embossing folder in there, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And two stacks of 12 by 12 cardstock. I mean, this is a big one. And so those are the two stamp sets and you have this birdhouse and then all the die cuts. And as you can see there, you have like little, uh, you know, strings and bows to hang the birdhouse down and then different die cuts to make the house and a lot of standalone die cuts that you see in the middle of the birdhouse that I have there. I mean, this is a great suite, a tremendous amount of um, creative opportunities. And I'm a big line art person, which is great for coloring, paper piecing, which you'll see in the next couple of weeks, me using this. But today I'm just using the images in Country Flowers and a couple of the die cuts I was going to use a sentiment on front, but I changed my mind. But look at all those standalone dies that you get with everything, and they coordinate with the entire suite. Even though the designer series paper is a lot different, you'll see how it all coordinates beautifully together. So that is not, well, it's just something I was playing around with to familiarize myself with, you know, this suite collection here. So I made that and used my Stampin' Blends, which I'm going to use today. And there is the designer series paper. That stack right there, I think that is more called, everything's like country woods, but you know, they separate, separate out the names of the stamp sets and the designer series paper. But that's more of a muted with very mellow patterns designer series paper. And I'm gonna run through that real quick. There's an eyelet folder that coordinates with it, but also if you look right there at that pattern, that beige pattern there, and the pattern we're going to use on our card today of the Smoky Slate or Granite Gray. There's an embossing folder in our online exclusives. See that right there of in the gray of fun patterns. And it, it perfectly matches that designer series paper. Same pattern, everything. So now that we made it through that, this stack of designer series paper also comes in the suite. It's very, very, I think it's very kind of nautical-like, a little bit kind of beachy, very East Coast. But if you want to really dive in paper piecing, it will go great with that large birdhouse image. You know, you have the multicolored wood, the more muted wood there, um, the darker wood. Everything's like very, very pantina. It's like a very wood base there that you can use on either the, the little footstool that we have in the stamp set, the birdhouse, any of the watering cans, you know, just like a water kettle and a water can. And beautiful, beautiful patterns here. So you get all of that in the suite collection. And again, it's absolutely amazing. So I'm going to show you what we're making today really soon. But there's also designer series paper in there that goes with that. So those are the Smoky Slate and Basic Gray Pearls in two different sizes that come along with the Sweet Collection as well. And it's a staple because of how neutral they are. We have Petal Pink and Basic White Ribbon, you know, diagonal striped, really, really nice. And the colors in this Sweet Collection are Petal Pink, Wild Wheat, Pool Party, Misty Moonlight, Crumb Cake, Pecan Pie, Early Espresso, Basic Beige, New Color, Granite Gray, Smoky Slate, and Basic Gray. Now, for this part right here, our cardstock is going to measure 10 and a quarter across by five and a half down. So the first thing I want to do is score at the six because that is going to leave me a four and a quarter basic, you know, panel over there on the right-hand side, which is what we use for our standard A2 cards. And then over from the left-hand side, a score mark at every inch and a half. So I want one and a half inches 
and then I want to do three and then four and a half inches and that is our fun fold right there well part of it the outside part of it super super easy and simple to do so again that is what our fun fold looks like and it's an accordion like a left side accordion I don't know what it's really called I'm just gonna call it a left hand side accordion fold and that's all you do peaks and valleys fold it like that and as you can see it's gonna stand up really really nice mailable and it will fit in one of our standard envelopes so that is going to be our base this is my sample card I made like last year because I've been meaning to do this for a while very designer series paper heavy what I like to do is lay my designer series paper on first before I do my cr my creases it's easier for me a lot of people like to put it on like I am right now but that works for me so this is part of the designer series paper I'm taking from the country wood suite that matches that online exclusives embossing folder and I'm going to lay all four of them down with liquid adhesives now when you're doing this be mindful about how you cut your designer series paper and make sure it lines up from left to right as you can see I'm like kind of doing here a little bit so that way when it opens up it, it you know it looks good but you're not going to see it open up all the way from the center fold that we're going to put in but you know you have to have that aesthetic thing going on there so I'm making sure that everything gets done, you know, nice and neat and fully adhered. I take my time doing this because I want it to turn out right. And that is going to be our back panel of the card. So I'm going to layer that on right now. And that is also from the same stack of designer series paper. And that is really how simple this fold is. So we are going to move along now to put in that insert that I just showed you. Ours is going to be petal pink. That is going to measure six inches across by four inches down. And I will have all their measurements and everything for you at cindybdesigns.com. There's a link underneath this video directly to the blog post. So I want to score that at three inches, you know, right in the middle so we get that kind of v mountain look that we're looking for in the card there and i did not measure the designer series paper right so i'm going to go cut it right now because that did not work out and since those panels are like three by three it's gonna be two and seven eighths or three by four two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths but like i said check out what i have over on the blog rather than listen to me now so i got the paper cut right and this time I'm using an eighth inch margin around rather than a quarter inch like I normally do because I wanted the fit to be tighter on the inside and that's just going to bug the daylights out of me. So I'm sneaking in a little bit more liquid adhesive on the back there to keep that down. And now I'm going to lay down the panel over on the right side. And when I was recutting the panels, you saw where I put our tear and tape on the back which is going to be on the left and right hand sides on the back that you see now so I have everything secured down I'm going to give that a quick crease with the bone folder and how I put this together is very extremely unconventional because that's just how I roll so I'm kind of winging it seeing how that's going to look where I want to place it right in the middle because I do have to place our panel on the back underneath where that last mountain fold goes so I'm going to be stamping our images what I'm pointing out there I'm not I decided not to use the sentiment at the last minute and they are all those beautiful line art images and those are going to be colored in with Stampin' Blends using let's see what I'm using I'll get to that when I color them so I'm laying everything out on a piece of basic white thick cardstock and you want to use that when you're coloring with our Stampin' Blends alcohol markers. I know that we don't have the Stamparatus anymore but I use it because I'm old and it's really easy on the wrist and everything like that. I'm going to ink up our images in Smoky Slate, color them in and then re-ink with 
our black ink, Memento Tuxedo Black. I don't like smearing images. I've talked about that little tool before, a Chucky. It just helps me get everything down nice and even. So I'm using Old Olive on those leaves there. And the bottom of the leaf is going to be in a light Old Olive color and the top is going to be in the dark. And I'm just going to show you bits and pieces of coloring here because it's all going to be the same in the long run. But with that new basic beige color that we have, that's also another great color to use if you want to do water coloring. No line water coloring as opposed to basic, well, smoky slate, crumb cake, or any of those colors like that. So I'm super speeding this up really quick because it's just basic coloring. And I'm not really going to do any blending until we get to like that little tea kettle there, the galvanized. That's what it looks like when I'm done coloring that whole leafy part. The galvanized um, flower market pot there. And our little stool is going to be covered or colored in pecan pie. So for the leaves on that floral cluster, they, actually I'm doing some, you know, two-tone coloring there. That is going to be in soft sea foam. And the large flowers are going to be in petal pink. And the small blue flowers you're going to see are going to be in boho blue. That is not a color in the sweet collection, but you know what? Bring it in. It, look, it still works out and it looks okay. Now I can definitely see using this sweet collection at Christmas time, bring in a pack of Christmas themed designer series paper, change the colors out with what you're coloring and voila, there you go. You have flowers, a birdhouse, benches, you know, these cute little pots. So I'm pulling in my petal pink marker the dark and I'm going to pull out that color with a light you know super easy blending really really quick to do and you see me twist and turn my marker around all the time because I don't want the tip of my Stampin Blend markers to dull out so I'm constantly turning that around and I use the side of the tip to um you know get the look I wanted to I do this a lot and it's called tip to tip coloring so I have my boho blue there, and I have the dark color on the bottom and the light on top. So with that tip to tip to get a third color, you want to take your light marker and pull off dark like you just saw, and you're going to get a third color there and blend it all out. And that dark color is going to come off the light when you, you know, lay your color down. So we have that cute little stool there, and I'm going to use pecan pie to get that all colored in. I'm using dark at the bottom and then at the top of the legs there, and I will do the same thing for the top of the stool there. And I just blend and blend and blend until I get the result that I want. The basic white thick cardstock is designed to be able to handle all that saturation, and that's where you you get the best color with the Stampin' lens. You just want to saturate the daylights out of it. It's going to come through the back, but it's going to be okay. And give it a couple minutes for it to dry. I mean, it dries instantly, but let the color settle in so you can determine what you want to do if you want to add more color to it or even pull some off because it is easier, way easier to add color to anything than it is to pull it off with a color lifter. So that's how simple it is to go ahead and get that color down. I'm going to color those two the same using Smoky Slate and Gray Granite. And so for what you see me coloring now, that is going to be in Smoky Slate. And then the top in the middle of that, I'm going to call it a bucket. That is going to be Granite Gray. And I think of these as... They would be great for paper piecing with the card stuff that comes along with this because there's some great patina card stuck in there. Or you can, or design a serious paper, or you can like even create it your own with the markers and adding in some blue, um, using the color lifter. I mean, you just wing it and do whatever you want. And that is what we're looking like so far. And I'm going to color the little tea kettle there the exact same way. So everything is... I got my color down now, and I'm going to pull it back in, ink everything up with Memento Tuxedo Black, 
lay that down a few times to get that black that I want. But it's not looking too good now because like, oh, there's all color, no definition between the lines. But doing this will add exactly what you want it to do and really crisp up those images. So as we are inking that up finally, I'm looking at the die cuts here from Country Woods in the Country Birdhouse. If you snip the bottom of the birdhouse off and it kind of edges in a little bit, I can see that as a really cool tiki hut using some of the designer series paper with the wood and the markers. I mean, there's a ton of possibilities that you can use here. So that is what our images are looking like. You can see how much better they look colored and fully stamped now. And this is when I am going to add on the little sentiments and the diamond figure that's going to be on top of the kettle. And it's going to say Farmer's Market over on the right image. I'm sorry, on the left. And then that little diamond image, not really diamond, but just that accent image over on the right for the tea kettle there. And that's going to be laid down in Memento Tuxedo Black as well. So I got our little sentiments down or accent stamps on the images. I'm going to die cut them out from our dies in the sweet collection. I got that really, really low tack blue tape from Amazon, something like that. I swear by it. Use it for a lot of things, as you can see. And I'm going to then run this through the stamp and cut in a boss machine. What I like to do with new dies is grab a Sharpie like that and put a dot at the very top rather than twist and turn and twist and turn like I'm doing right now because that gets to be irritating after a while. And it's just much easier that way. And sometimes I'll put it on the top of the stamp too. It just depends on how my memory process is working. And that's always, you know, a shot in the dark pretty much. So I'm going to get everything, you know, again, laid down here, run that through our stamp and cut in a boss machine, and then come back with everything die cut for you. So you can see how beautifully our dies cut really close to the edge there. And so when you lay them down, you want to be able to see the black outline of everything. And it's going to show you exactly that. So I'm pretty much winging everything and figuring out, okay, this is what I want it to look like and get everything on our panel there, make sure it fits, getting my scale correct, um, all that stuff. And, you know, just laying everything out how you normally would. And so how I'm going to adhere this is I glued everything on top, what I needed to, with liquid adhesive and put mini Stampin' and Dimensionals on the back. And I'm going to pop that right onto our panel there, like you see. And that's another instance of how I use that tape to keep my projects right or straight on my glass mat or whatever I'm using at that point in time. So I'm getting all that down perfectly. Use my little pokey tool to pull that up. And this is where I get kind of I'm not going to say wonky, but, you know, I do things not so much on the traditional side. You know, make it work for you. So you're going to see me try and use a clip to hold that yellow, not yellow panel, the um, petal pink panel down. And that's not going to work. And I'm going to eventually end up using tape. And I don't know why this is coming out like this because I had to super sped up to four. But I guess I have to, you know, get my way through this somehow. Because every time I do try to turn it up to four and edit it this time around, I don't know why. It like mess up my voiceover and do everything else. So I'm sorry, you have to suffer through this. So I got my um, panel tape down to the front there, as you see. You know, go back for seconds like a dummy and try to get another clip in there. And I think it kind of worked this time a little bit. So I'm going to pull off our tear and tape from the back there. And I'm getting that down on that one panel there, top to bottom, centered left to right, pulling off the tape. And 
the bottom's already down, so just keep that flat, and it's automatically going to fold or adhere perfectly for you. You open it up, and there you go. And it stands up on its own. You have like a great mountain valley there, and, and with the folds. So I have the inside of what's going to be on the back of our four and a quarter by five and a half panel there. And I'm grabbing a little image from the Country Birdhouse with some boho blue ink. And I'm just going to stamp that around the outside a couple times. I'm not going to color that in or do anything like that. And this time around, the only sentiments I'm using are on our little flower cans and kettles there. This way I can like really customize this card how I want to, just in case I don't have the right kind of sentiment in my stash I'm looking for that I want to send out or give to somebody. So we're going to use that as a mat, the smoky, that's a basic gray, I think. I think so. I don't have my card in front of me for some reason. Yeah, that is basic gray. And I'm just going to lay that down and then pull in some more liquid adhesive and then adhere that to the back. And I'm going to lay that down just as actually not liquid adhesive. I'm using seal this time around and you're going to see my fingers get all just sticky and do everything weird because like I said, I'm not going to do it in a traditional manner. I want it, you know, to go down straight. So there's my process as weird as it sounds, but it did turn out and that is going to be our card. Very simple to make. It's going to fit into one of our standard you know, envelopes. I do end up embellishing that in the middle with those gems that you see, but you can also add designer series paper to the back over there on the left hand side, anywhere else that you want, just to make it look as pretty as you want, as easy as you want. And it's really that simple to do. Don't let fen folds intimidate you. So again, that is my sample that I got the inspiration for this card. And I think next week we are going to do another fun fold. I mean, why not? So drag out your designer series paper with the scenery in the back that looks like that, you know, so it flows real simple. So I do thank you for joining me today. Um, be sure to hit like, subscribe, leave a comment. I always appreciate that. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. So again, thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic week. And I will see you again the next time around.